When you think back to the opening scene of Game of Thrones Season 1, what really sticks in your mind? For me, in addition to getting the first view of the wall when the rangers depart, and of course the reveal of the others, one of the moments that always stuck out from the very first scene was the moment where that body that had been strapped up to a tree turned around and opened its eyes. The way that the others arranged the bodies of the wildlings in various symbols throughout the show definitely gave hints of some level of intelligence and potentially even some sort of communication that they were trying to get across to the humans. Now, the television show never really gave us a satisfying answer on any of this because they decided to cut some of the harder-to-explain, deeper magical elements from the later seasons, but I think finally the pieces have been put together, and by the end of this video, I hope you'll feel like you have a better understanding of what was going on with those symbols that were left by the others, and what exactly they were trying to communicate. Now, this theory relies pretty heavily on what I've been talking about on my channel for a while with what's going on with the Weirwoods and the Wall and how they're essentially a giant magical connected system that is probably the thing that produces the others. So if you're new here and that sounds incredibly confusing, don't worry, just sit tight, I'll explain it briefly, and then at the end of the video there's going to be a playlist in the end card if you want to get caught up in detail. The important thing that you need to know for this video is essentially that in Bloodraven's cave, we see a bunch of old past green seers when Bran is warging into Hodor and he's walking around deep in the tunnels. And all of these green seers seem to still be alive. They are kept bound to life by their connection to the Weirwoods, but all they can do is have their eyes look back and forth. One of them tries to open its mouth, but it can't speak. So these things are bound to life by their connection to the trees, but they can't do anything else. So this Weirwood system is keeping these bodies alive, and then the other thing that's important to know is that the others are constantly described as though they are shadows. They are white shadows that are color matched to the Weirwoods, and therefore one of the things that I've speculated is that they could essentially be shadow babies like Melisandre can cast, but cast with a green seer as the life force that is sustaining them. So if you have an immortally ever-sustained life force, you can have a shadow that is a cold, weirwood-colored shadow that is out there living forever. So essentially, the others might be shadows of these bodies that are strapped to trees within this big weirwood network that is essentially sustaining them all, that is the old gods, that is being fed blood constantly to keep it running, and that's all sustained by the old ways culture. It's like a whole big, giant, magical system. This system is essentially functioning as a world tree for the world, and it is like a magical vessel that essentially all of the magical power flows through, right? Like, by being able to be hooked up to the trees, you can become a green seer. It is sort of implied that all the old gods see magic all comes from the Weirwoods, and that's why everyone worships and prays to the Weirwoods. So all of the power seems to channel through these trees. When we first see the others in the prologue, they are described as shadows, and some of them are described as clones to the first, which sort of implies they may be cast from the same source. If it feels like I'm glossing over this or going quickly, that's because, as I said, there's like a whole half an hour long video where I go into greater detail about this, but the basic point may be becoming clear. If you have the bodies that are casting the others, all strapped up to these weirwood trees or in the tree network, like the bodies that we see down in Bloodraven's cave, and like with what we see in Bloodraven himself, if these are green seer shadow babies, they could be potentially talking about their own bodies when they are using the imagery of a body stabbed up to a tree. So, in the opening of Game of Thrones, when they show us the others have arranged one body stabbed up to a tree and some sort of symbol in the snow next to it, it could be saying one of a few things. They could be communicating that, hey, you need to be feeding more blood to the trees to continue to sustain our bodies as per the pact, or it could be communicating something along the lines of, hey, we're coming to bring down the wall so we can get to those bodies, and then we can take down these bodies and try to end our constant suffering strapped to these trees. Essentially, it's going one way or the other. They want to either continue to be alive, or they want these bodies that are projecting them out into the world destroyed, because after so long being strapped to a tree, unable to move, these bodies are sick and tired of it. And I think both of these potential motivations for the others have a little bit of evidence in the text. 
Bran when Mira points out to him that he'll be a green seer who will get to be around long after they're gone, he's really sad about that. He doesn't want to be around long after his friends are gone. And this is sort of a thing that's one of the themes of these books is all of these ways of immortality that require the sacrifice of others to sustain you are probably not actually a great thing. So when we see Bran, who may end up eventually being the green seer in charge of all of this, being skeptical of the idea of sticking around forever long after all of his friends are gone, well maybe he could be the one in position to end this entire system. And maybe that's what all of these bodies who no longer have the ability to do that, or are no longer in control of anything, well maybe that's what they would want as well, and maybe if the others are cast from them, the others could be coming to try and destroy this Weirwood system to essentially free their own bodies. The other alternative is that the others really do just want to sustain these bodies, and the fact that there has been less and less worship of the Weirwoods, less and less worship of the old gods, the pact has slowly been broken, the first night has been ended, the blood sacrifice that we've talked about in this entire series to the Weirwoods has all been slowly cut off. Which, if the blood sacrifice is needed to sustain the bodies which project the others, then that would also make sense as to why the thing that they left for the Night's Watch to find is a body stabbed up to a tree, and then a bunch of other bodies laid out symbolically out in front of it, almost like a worshipping sacrifice to the bodies that are strapped to the trees. Like a, hey, remember the pact, remember, our bodies are strapped to trees, and you need to sustain them by sacrificing bodies to those trees, so we're going to show you. We're going to strap a body to a tree, and we're going to lay out a bunch of bodies in front of it as a blood sacrifice. When Davos is talking to a Northman, he points out that the Southerners don't know this, but the Northmen hang entrails in the branches of the weirwood trees as a ritual. This is a part of the Northmen culture that is slowly being forgotten and is being practiced less and less, and if it's needed to sustain the bodies that project the others, well then it would make sense that they are sending this very strong reminder. Now the idea that the others were in some way or another cast from bodies that were bound to trees is made stronger the further you go into the television show. Because how do we see the others created in the show? Well, they bind a body to a tree and stab it. Very similar to how they see the body stabbed up to the tree in the opening scene. Now the implication is probably that as soon as the camera cut, that guy was unbound from the tree and went on to become the Night King, but when you look at in the books how George has this all built up, it seems much more likely that the bodies are remaining bound to the trees and the shadows cast from them are what's out in the world as the others. So in the television show, they may have just not wanted to show the scene where they had to do the whole shadow baby making process. Once the body was bound up to the tree, they figured that might be more difficult to explain, so they just kind of went with a basic summary of what actually happened, which is the others are in fact created from bodies bound to weirwood trees. And let's remember that the weirwood tree that we specifically see them create the others at is marked by a specific spiraling symbol, which is, you know, there in the ground next to the big weirwood. Now, if you have seen my series of videos or are going to go watch it after, you will know or find out that I believe the heart of this entire weirwood system is very likely within the wall itself. There is, at least in my opinion, very good hints that the wall has weirwoods inside of it, and if you're going to have all of the conflict resolve around a singular location, it really kind of makes sense to make it the wall, because then when the wall falls, you can have a very quick, comparatively, conflict resolution, and a lot of things can all just sort of fall into place. So if the others are cast from the body that is marked by the spiral symbol, and I think the actual location of that in the books will be within the wall, well then it gets a little bit interesting when one of the few magical things that the television show showed us was the scene where we get Ned Umber's body strapped up to a wall in his castle with the exact same spiral symbol and the exact same imagery of the body strapped to the tree in the beginning of the show. So it is a child's body stabbed to a wall rather than stabbed to a tree and marked with the symbol of the other's creation which could, in my opinion, be a little wink and a nod to the actual book lore that will eventually be revealed when it is one day revealed that the others were created from within the wall itself, from this heart tree system that is currently encased in ice. 
Now, this was one of those things that I hadn't even really noticed before I started making my series, and as I was in the middle of it, it was pointed out to me in the comments, and then going back and looking at it in all of this context just makes so much sense of the little hints that the show seems to have been leaving. So, while I base what I think is actually canon and what's going on, as in what comes from George R. R. Martin, much more than what comes from HBO, it's when the two line up in little ways like this and when you can draw connections that I feel like it's really worth talking about. So I'm very curious to hear what you think of that explanation down in the comments. Do you think that what the show was giving us with these little symbols, and especially there in Season 1 when George would have been heavily involved, when there's this body strapped up to a tree, and a bunch of other bodies laid out in front of it, do you think that this is all hinting at the blood sacrifice, and the bodies that are strapped to the trees that Bran finds down in the cave, and how all of this stuff seems to be functioning as a giant, magical, connected, weirwood blood sacrifice system that is potentially the old gods itself, and the others are potentially just another piece of that giant, magical, biological machine. Also, I'm very curious to see which of the two options you think the others are trying to communicate. Do they want to sustain these bodies that are stuck on these trees somewhere, or do they want to kill them? One thing I probably could have mentioned earlier when we were talking about which direction they want to go with this, either kill the bodies on the trees or sustain them, is the fact that the bodies that they laid out in front of the body on the tree do look a lot like the Theta symbol, which has been used as a representation of death. But the others themselves are also death incarnate in a lot of ways in the story, so it could just be that, but it could also be directly translated as give death to the bodies that are stuck to the tree. Or, again, it could be give more blood and give more death sacrifice to the bodies on the tree. Which one do you think it is? And while you're letting me know your opinions down in the comments, make sure to like and subscribe if you've made it this far. It really does help the videos get shared out to more people, and I'll see you with something else very soon.